At Wu Yi, we believe that raising healthy children starts with strong and healthy families, resourceful communities, and access to high quality childcare. In this five protective factors video, we reviewed what makes a strong family. But building this resilience also means understanding and sometimes dealing with trauma. Trauma defined as a deeply distressing or disturbing experience or physical injury weakens families and communities when left untreated. We believe that developing knowledge of what trauma is, how to identify it, how it affects children and adults alike, and where to go for help is key to breaking the cycle of trauma that so many are caught in and building opportunities for healthy futures for our children. Trauma is more prevalent than many of us realize. In fact, more than 50% of the general population has experienced a traumatic event. There are two types of trauma, individual trauma and community trauma. Individual trauma happens to one person, though, as you'll see, the ripple effects of one person's trauma can affect many others down the line. Community trauma, on the other hand, is the combination of experiences that negatively impact an entire community. Sometimes an event can impact a few people, but then have wider reaching structural and social consequences for the community. Trauma affects all families across socioeconomic groups, regardless of race and ethnicity. Oftentimes, individual and community trauma intersect and individuals might be facing multiple kinds of trauma at once, layered on top of one another. Individual trauma might be accompanied by community trauma, trauma from historical inequities, and systemic oppression. This happens when a person is dealing with not only specific traumatic events, but more general trauma that comes with poverty, violence, racism, marginalized communities, gender inequality, and hate crimes. The pandemic is a good example of this, where various kinds of trauma largely affected low-income and diverse neighborhoods. Individual trauma is characterized by shame or personal blame, secrecy, power imbalances, a sense of hopelessness, and a sense of isolation, and a sense of irretrievable loss. One example of individual trauma is child abuse. While it's important to understand and deal with the various traumas facing adults and communities, we want to specifically address childhood trauma, as childhood trauma is at the root of issues that persist for lifetimes or even generations. Another term for childhood trauma is ACEs, adverse childhood experiences. This can include things like abuse, neglect, and family dysfunction. Abuse can be physical, emotional, or sexual. Neglect is another form of trauma. Neglect can be physical or emotional. Severe parental neglect can be just as damaging as physical abuse. In fact, young children suffering from prolonged neglect experience more serious damage than physical abuse. Severely neglected children can face cognitive delays, attention problems, language deficits, and have more challenges in school and problems with peer interactions and relationships. Another type of trauma kids face is family dysfunction. That can come from dealing with challenging issues in a household, such as mental illness, incarcerated relatives, domestic abuse, substance abuse, and divorce. No matter what kind of trauma a child faces, these ACEs can negatively impact their brain development. Trauma can decrease size and connectivity in some parts of the brain and impair the emotional and behavioral functioning of the child. This PET scan of the brain of a normal child shows regions of high and low activity. At birth, only the primitive structures such as the brainstem are fully functional. In regions like the temporal lobes, early childhood experiences wire the circuits. This PET scan shows the brain of a Romanian orphan who was institutionalized shortly after birth and shows the effects of extreme deprivation in infancy. The temporal lobes which regulate emotions and receive input from the senses are barely functioning. Such children suffer from emotional and cognitive problems. It's important to learn to recognize signs of trauma in young children. That means looking for things like delayed development of verbal skills, 
regressive behaviors, aggression, or excessive crying or screaming. Children and adolescents who experience developmental trauma or traumatic experience often have a delay in their normal brain development process. Examples include difficulty concentrating, increased frustration with difficult tasks, non-compliance with directions, and challenges with executive function like planning and problem solving. Another learning related effect of trauma is the inability to process relationships and emotions. That means students may have difficulty forming and maintaining relationships, reading social cues, and trusting others. Traumatized children also may suffer from the inability to predict and make inferences. Lastly, a common effect of trauma on children is awareness of the future. Now that we've explained how trauma impacts individuals and their communities, it's important to understand how it also impacts future generations. Caregivers with untreated trauma can pass the trauma to children, perpetuating a cycle of trauma and impacting future generations. This parent-child shared trauma impacts the ability to parent and the children may later blame parents or caregivers for not preventing stress and trauma. People whose caregivers suffer from untreated trauma are more prone to PTSD, struggle to repair conflicts, struggle with relationships, unintentionally bringing out negative behaviors in others, can be emotionally detached and can be more prone to disassociate. And this cycle can start before a baby is even born. Trauma leads to a mother releasing cortisol, which is absorbed by a baby through the placenta. This can impact the stress response systems and the nervous system of the unborn baby. After birth, untreated caregiver trauma can affect children when caregivers struggle to regulate emotions, when it strains attachments and relationships with children, and impacts a child's sense of self and ability to understand how their behavior can influence others' behavior. You can see how important it is to heal trauma and break this loop. It is never too late to change the impact of negative experiences. One trusted, supportive individual can mitigate the trajectory of trauma. Healthy and secure relationships with other adults help strengthen a child's social, emotional development. And while attachments to their parents are primary, young children can also benefit significantly from relationships with other responsive caregivers, both within and outside the family. Now that we've helped you identify and understand the importance of dealing with trauma, the best first step is to reach out for help if you need it. That means contacting your local FRC who have child development specialists and teachers who are here to help. You can find more resources here.